Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I am talking about Red Sonia. Book number one, The Ring of Ikrabu. Not sure how you say that. This is by David C. Smith and Richard L. Tierney, and it is from Ace Fantasy. Look at that lovely paperback, lovely cover. Always enjoy these old fantasy paperback covers. This one is from Boris. I believe it's Boris Vallejo. I believe is the uh, artist's full name. Yes, always good. Uh, so this is from 1981. I was in the mood for some pulp, and I had gotten this entire series. There's six or eight books in the series. Got a whole set of them from eBay some time ago, and uh, and I've never read them before. Uh, so Red Sonia, first of all, a little history. Red Sonia is sort of a Robert E. Howard character. Uh, Robert E. Howard being the creator of Conan. Solomon Kane, a bunch of different great pulp era characters. Uh, there's an introduction by Roy Thomas, the comic book creator. And he talks about how uh, Marvel Comics had the Conan property and they wanted to bring in some more recurring characters. He said there weren't a lot of, of return characters in, in the Conan original Conan stories by Robert E. Howard. So they wanted to bring in some, create some characters that could be the supporting cast, essentially, in the Conan comic book. <clears throat> and so, uh, in a Robert E. Howard story was a character named Red Sonia of Rogatine. Rogatine? Not sure how. It was spelled differently. It was spelled S-O-N-Y-A. And I believe was just in one story. A blonde. Let's see. No, a redhead. Of course. Sorry, I looked at something. Saw the word blonde. Um, so, they took this character, Marvel, Roy Thomas. They took this character, this one-off character. <clears throat> changed her up quite a bit. Changed the spelling of the name and created Red Sonia, She-Devil with a Sword, for the comic books. Um, and then, after the popularity, she was in Conan, got her own comic book. She's still getting comic books from Dynamite. Uh, I don't know how that works. If Marvel created the character, technically, why Dynamite now has the rights, I don't know. But... Uh, comic book character, and then novels. So technically, I could put these with all my Marvel novels? I don't know. But anyway, that's all just a little behind-the-scenes stuff about the character. I don't know if any of that made sense. Basically, a character named Red Sonia, spelled with a Y, in a single story by Robert E. Howard, Roy Thomas and Marvel Comics took the foundation of that, created essentially a completely different character with the same name with slightly different spelling, made that into a comic book sensation, and then we got novels. In this novel, there's a sorcerer looking for a ring. Um, <clears throat> there's a cold open kind of thing. Uh, there's this duke. I believe he's a duke that is working for the sorcerer, but the sorcerer is disappointed because the duke isn't doing his job. Sorcerer curses the duke. Cut to a rainy night in this town, in a tavern. Uh, so it's just filled with people having fun, drinking, eating, making merry during this rainstorm. But there's somebody there trying to recruit mercenaries for his king's army, because the king, uh, the king's city was attacked by this sorcerer, and the king and his army were run out of the city, and now they want help taking the city back. In all of this, Red Sonia shows up at the tavern. 
she agrees to um, be hired to help this king. And so some of the other, after seeing some of her sword play, some of the other mercenaries agree to help. And so they're going to go help this king take his city back from this sorcerer. That's a, and there's this whole ring that the sorcerer is looking for in the middle of all of this. And that's your basic foundation for the story. I seem to like using that word today. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <coughs> this book is, I enjoyed it. I gave it three out of five, which means I liked it. Three out of five on Goodreads. Um, it's, it's, I think it's very much fits in the Conan type of, in the type of, in that realm, the writer's style apes, Robert E. Howard. Uh, there is tons of swords, sword play. Uh, there are some interesting characters. One of the mercenaries I'm really, really a fan of. I liked that guy. He was a lot of fun. There's uh, the Duke Pelides. Not sure how to pronounce his name. He's, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? What's going to happen with him? Uh, the king is a, is a good character. And we get uh, some really horrific scenes. There's some terror in this. And a lot of the Robert E. Howard stories had horrific elements. Uh, there's, you, I believe you can get a book of like all the horror stories of Robert E. Howard, but even his fantasy is Conan and Solomon Kane, especially in my opinion, had some horrific elements. There are elements of H.P. Lovecraft or the mythos type of thing. And we have that here as well. There are undead creatures and tentacle monsters and cults and sorcery, all sorts of crazy stuff. There were times when it felt like Sonya was almost a secondary character in her own book, but other times where she's obviously front and center, we get her origin story. I don't know exactly where that story was originally told in the comics. Um, and if you don't want to hear what it is, a very quick version of what it is, skip the next minute maybe uh, but essentially when red sonia was a child <laughs> her family was slaughtered by mercenaries she was raped left to die she wandered off into the forest where she encountered some angelic entity and she made a vow to the entity uh that she would never have relations with a man who couldn't defeat her in um, combat. And then this entity essentially, it's not really clear, sort of gave her fighting prowess. And so she became the she-devil with a sword. Uh, so that's all a very detailed um, origin story in the book. And... Um, I, I'm forgetting a word in that uh, combat thing, and I can't remember what it is, but basically, it's like she can't fake it. She can't, if she's really hot for a guy, she can't let him win. It has to be actual combat. She has to actually be defeated. And, and then, she can have a love. But, I think she's destined to be alone. Um, so I think she's an interesting character and, uh, I mean, obviously I have a bunch of the comics I have, I have an issue one hanging on the wall. I like some of the stuff dynamite has done with her crossing over with Vampirella and I have some of the old Marvel comics in a reprinted edition. I wish I could find like an omnibus or an epic collection with all of her. Marvel stuff. Um, I think I just saw in the catalog. 
there's one coming out. I don't know if it's an omnibus, but it's going to have the older stuff. Maybe it is an omnibus. Those are too expensive nowadays. Anyway, uh, so this book, Red Sonia, The Ring of Ikrabu, very enjoyable. If you like Conan and that type of stuff, uh, you know, the sword, swords and sorcery type of books, it's well written. The characters are interesting. Plenty of action, plenty of horror, plenty of gore. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And plenty of twists and turns. I don't think it's mind-blowing or anything, but I found it very entertaining. I'm glad that I got the entire series. Uh, so you're going to see these coming up every once in a while. Um, so that's, yeah, that's Red Sonia, The Ring of Ikrabu. Enjoyable. <laughs> that was kind of a flat way to, to end that. Uh, do I have a question for this video? Um, I've talked about mixed genres before, obviously horror westerns and that sort of thing. Uh, so I guess, so my question for this video is, will a horror element draw you to a genre that you wouldn't normally be interested in? Um, obviously horror westerns. If you're not, not a fan of westerns, but you see, oh, there's this series of splatter westerns, super gory and horror, horror, excuse me. Um, I'll read that, even though I don't like westerns. Uh, if you're not a fan of fantasy or, um, you know, sword and sorcery type stuff, if you knew that there was a horror element to it, would that get you to pick it up? Um, maybe I should have saved this question for when the Cullen Bunn edited fantasy horror anthology comes out in June. But, uh, but I'm asking it now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think my answer would be yes. Horror is going to draw me to something. Uh, recently, Brian Smith was talking about um, his writing and different things. And... Uh, how he sometimes feels trapped because uh, certain things that he writes always seem to sell very well. When he tries something a little different, it doesn't necessarily make him any money, and so he feels that he's he has to write certain types of things. And he wants to, he really wants to stretch his wings, do things that are different, and so I told him that, you know, I would, I, I'll pick up whatever he puts out and then parenthetically said, please do not write a Daniel Steele type romance. And he replied with, if I did write a Daniel Steele type romance, I'm sure it would turn into this and there would be BDSM and horror and all this sort of thing. And I said, well, I would definitely pick that up. And I think I would, if someone were writing a, what ostensibly is a romance novel, but threw in horror, I'd at least give it a try. I think, I think there are books out there that are like that. Um, maybe Kelly Armstrong. I don't know if the romance and relationships come first or the horror comes first in some of hers. Um, I don't know if Anita Blake would fall into that. That's maybe more erotic than romance, but uh, the Anita Blake books, that's not the author's name. But anyway, that's the character, Anita Blake. Uh, but what, what about you? So would you pick up a romance if it had a strong horror element or a fantasy or a Western or whatever, a mystery? Love a horror mystery. Um, let me know in the comments below. If you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here at the Low Budget Review Show. Please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is 
currently at Ronan5757, my Instagram where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H 5757. That's all I have for you this week. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I've been Eric Smith, and until next time, read more books.